Hi, I'm Peter from Coffee Parts and I'm here with Andre Eman talking about five things you can do to improve your coffee game. Andre, firstly, welcome back. Thank you. For those that might not know you, you wanna give a 30 second bio of who you are? Yeah, let's do that. So for those who don't know me yet, I have started my coffee journey back in uh, Kenya and Tanzania as a coffee trader. From there, I went uh, to Europe, worked in coffee marketing, then uh, opened an academy, launched a specialty coffee uh, line, and uh, ended up uh, as a barista competing in 2017 at the Swiss and later at the World Barista Championship and uh, I was the one who took a roaster on stage, talked about the concept called uh, ultimate freshness and roasted my coffee live on stage uh, for the sensory judges. And later on, uh, deep dive into uh, the coffee science part of, of this beautiful industry and published a, a paper, a scientific paper on uh, grinding and coffee extraction. And now ended up uh, in Australia being able to talk uh, to the Australian uh, coffee community. So on that note, I think you know a bit about coffee. So what would be your five tips, simple tips that everyone can do to really improve their coffee game, be it at home or in a cafe? All right, five simple tips. So the first one would be use clean equipment, both the machine and the grinder. That is uh, the best uh, starting point. Have a look at your water quality. Use fresh water, no uh, bad smells, uh, no chemicals inside uh, you don't want. Then fresh beans. Yeah, of course in Australia you use, uh, from my personal point of view, ultimate fresh coffee sometimes, maybe even too fresh. But uh, choose the beans uh, you like and use fresh coffee. Store it uh, in small bags, keep them close. That will definitely help. Yep. Then when it comes to coffee making, use a recipe. Yep. Let's say 20 grams in, 40 grams out in 25 seconds. Yep. The best would be to use scales because then you can make consistent coffee, one coffee after the other. Yep. And I know you guys love your milk here, dairy and dairy milk alternatives. Make sure you use fresh milk the best would be out of uh, the fridge because the cooler the milk is before you texture it, the more time you have to get this smooth, creamy texture. There are five awesome tips. I think we could dive into each tip mm -hmm. just to give a bit more information. So when it comes to cleaning the machine and the grinder, what are we talking about? Just back flushing, purging, putting grinder tablets through the grinder or a bit more, a bit less? What are your thoughts? Oh, very good uh, question. I believe if you do one to two coffees a day, yeah. you do not need uh, to use chemicals on a daily basis. Maybe once uh, a week or every two weeks uh, will be fine. Keep in mind, every time you clean uh, the machine with chemicals, you can take it back in terms of uh, cleanliness to step zero when you first uh, got uh, your machine. Within espressos, make sure you perch uh, the group head. That just makes sure that uh, you taste or drink the coffee only once. Yep. You don't extract the, the beans uh, several times and nothing is stuck or get burned yep. at the shower screen. And for the steam one, the, I mean, no one wants to uh, enjoy uh, baked uh, milk. So make sure every time uh, you clean the steam one, before you start uh, texturing the milk, yep. just quickly perch yep. to make sure uh, everything is clean, nothing got uh, stuck or sucked yep. up uh, in uh, the steam one. And after texturing the milk, make sure nothing is left, uh, the holes are always uh, clean, nothing yep. gets uh, stuck, and then the milk will be fine. Yeah, from a practical approach, it means after you make your coffee, taking your portafilter out, giving a quick purge, and from the steam one, a wet cloth, wiping it and purging it after, and purging before. Yeah. From a grinder perspective, looking at, um, sometimes it's a bit harder because you've got to grind out your coffee, but would you yep. be putting in like, grinding cleaning tablets every couple of months, or what would you be doing? Yeah, that can help, uh, definitely. In a busy cafe in uh, Australia, for sure, the baristas will clean the grinder, open uh, the burr chamber, clean the burrs uh, yeah. on a daily basis. Maybe for home use, uh, that's going uh, too far, but from time to time, uh, 
put some cleaning tablets uh, for the grinder uh, through the burrs, uh, that definitely makes uh, sense. That will take out uh, the oils, the residuals and uh, make the grinder also work uh, in a more consistent way. So moving on from cleaning, you said water quality. So Australia, the water quality does vary from the east coast to further up north and especially out west where you're yep. going to get a lot more scale build up, etc. But what would you be looking at at water quality as a ballpark? Water quality is another beast that you can study from a scientific uh, point of view. Let's keep it very simple. simple. The first thing, it should be odor free. Yeah. If you can smell uh, something is in the water, that would be uh, the wrong water yeah. uh, to use. Then uh, looking at the uh, lime scale, just make sure uh, you have a filter. If you are living in an area with a lot of uh, calcium, that the machine will not uh, suffer. And uh, in certain areas here in Australia, I even uh, figured out you have too little minerals uh, in the water. Yeah. So there you would even need a filtration system that will add some minerals to your water, because otherwise uh, there is no much uh, coffee flavor in the cup. Yeah, so the ideal generally is 100 in the TDS. Yeah. Yeah, like some places are quite low, so that you can use a remineralizer and vice versa when there is, it's quite hard. Um, to bring it back, otherwise you're going to get a chalky taste yep. or, or a weak body. But if you live in Melbourne, you pretty much have the perfect uh, water. It's nearly the WBC uh, standard, so ready to be used for the World Barista Championship. I live in Sydney, so I'll, I'll say that for Sydney. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and next thing you talked about was fresh coffee or fresh beans yeah. and the storage of it. So do you want to dive into that a little bit? Yes, so if you make one to two coffees a day at home, don't buy the big uh, bags. Just mm -hmm. buy uh, the smaller bags, maybe 250 grams. Keep them uh, in a cool and dry uh, space and open the bag uh, once you want to start uh, using the beans. So some of you might uh, be traveling around, getting a lot of different beans from different roasters because they have been maybe to a coffee championship or uh, went to a coffee fair. So the best thing would uh, be to seal uh, the valve with a sticker and then put the beans into a deep freezer and that will uh, slow down the chemical and the physical uh, aging process. Yeah. And then once you, you're ready to use those beans, you take out the bag, wait for about uh, two to three uh, hours to let the beans get back to ambient temperature. Yep. And then you fill them into your grinder and they're ready to go. Okay. Would you use like um, a coffee storage, whatever the brand is, container to prolong so it's not sitting in the hopper the whole period of the week or would you kind of not worry as much? Oh, it's different because uh, it's, it's difficult to say because the amount of beans, if you don't have a single dose uh, grinders, will also have an impact on uh, the grinder setting, let's say uh, the particle size yeah. distribution. So a certain weight uh, on the burr chamber yeah. will give you more consistency. But on the other hand, uh, if you use too many beans, they're exposed to the air, they will uh, oxidize, they will get rancid. So in general, I would use as little beans as possible yeah. in the hopper. Yeah. Cool. And next we talked about consistency um, ratios, yeah. basically scales, weighing yeah. in, weighing out. Do you want to explain that a little bit more? Yeah. So once uh, you like uh, a coffee and you did a recipe and you will say that's the best coffee I ever had, maybe the next morning you want to have the same experience. If you don't know what you have done on the previous day, how do you want to repeat this yeah. great uh, coffee experience? That's why I think it makes sense to use a so-called recipe. So 20 grams in, so for every coffee you do, you use the same amount of ground coffee and uh, you will uh, have a shot time of maybe let's say uh, 27 seconds and that will give you the 40 grams into the cup. Yeah. Don't get too fussy if it's like uh, 40.2 grams or maybe 39.5, that is still the same. And if it's not precisely 27 seconds, maybe once it's 29, maybe a little bit uh, less uh, for the next shot, don't go too crazy because coffee at the end of the day is a natural product. There are certain variations and you're not a robot. 
So when uh, I was working uh, in the lab, we did experiments and we had about uh, 2,000 uh, shots that we measured with the same recipe and they were all within uh, the three seconds. But that is because I competed in the Worlds, I used professional equipment, uh, I got uh, used to make coffee in big volumes uh, for uh, entire six months, so then you are very precise. Otherwise, don't overcomplicate it, try to follow the recipe as close as possible and don't forget to enjoy the coffee and don't get lost uh, in the tiny little details. I feel like even just having the scale to weigh in, so it's always 20 grams, yep. makes a big difference. And lastly, for the milk drinkers out there, you mentioned cold milk. Yes. So you can only texture the milk to a certain temperature. The best end temperature would be somewhere around 50 to max uh, 60 degrees uh, Celsius. So if you already start at ambient temperature, so 20 in Australia is very warm, maybe 30 degrees, yeah. you only have a window of maybe 20 to 30 degrees to texture the milk. So that won't allow you to get this creamy, smooth, silky texture. So make sure when you uh, texture your milk, take it out straight from uh, the fridge. It's as cool as possible. Use the amount uh, in the jug, texture the milk, and uh, it will be beautiful because then you have more time to texture the milk. And I think the overall theme of that is consistency to whatever you're doing. You're doing it quite similar to get similar result yep. or, or moving this one variable at a time. Absolutely. Don't go too crazy on coffee. Don't uh, start making coffee having in mind pressure profiling, uh, temperature profiling. Just go for consistency, follow the recipe. Once you master that, then you can go and turn the page and uh, open a new chapter in your coffee book. Otherwise, stay calm, enjoy simple, tasty coffee following a recipe. Have a clean machine, grinder and uh, the machine itself. Use fresh, clean, order-free water. Tasty beans, tasty beans are the ones uh, you like. They should be fresh. Use the recipe, the scale. If you like milk beverages, cold milk and you are done. And consistency, I believe, uh, is the key to uh, tasty coffee every day, again and again. That's an epic set of five. And on that note, if you have a question for Andre or myself, or what are your top five things, let me know in the comments below. If this video has brought you value, hit that thumbs up. And like always, please subscribe and see you in the next video. And Andre, thank you again. Thank you.